Shalom. My name is Joshua Inslee and I am the Director of Reclamation Ministries at ReclamationMinistries.net or Facebook.com slash Reclamation Ministries. I've put together this video today because I had a brother from my congregation contact me and show me a video that's on the internet from uh, a user named Messenger of the Name about the idea of Jesus Christos, the name of our Messiah in the Greek, not being in the oldest Bible in the world, the Codex Sinaiticus. Uh, the thesis of the video was that the name doesn't appear at all throughout the entire thing. Now, granted, this Codex is from Genesis to Revelation and then some even more additional books in it. And the idea here is that it does not appear one time. I want to go through here and I want to explain to messenger of the name as well as anybody who's watching this video that the name does appear in this codex just as many times as it appears in our modern English Bibles or any of the the Nessie, uh, Nestle Aland or the UBS Greek text or, or the Textus Receptus any of the any of the Greek text that we have today including the uh, the codex one of four major codexes uh, in the world uh, the position is uh, as I said it just doesn't appear in there that uh, these two letters that do appear he quotes from Revelation 1 1 actually are not the name in Greek but hint to his Hebrew name uh, we're gonna get there in a second but uh, like I said he uses Revelation 1 1 he uses one verse but he, uh, he does do a good job and he says that you know you can go to uh, the codex uh, website and you can go and you can look on it and uh, you can look up any passage and I uh, that is that is great that you provided that resource. Thank you very much. I've actually worked with this codex. I work with uh, much Greek text at my university. I'm a Greek student. Uh, it's it's what I'm concentrating in in my degree, and uh, I just thought this would be a this would be a good opportunity to uh, shed some light on this topic that I feel like is that is uh, very misunderstood. Um, now I want to quote from the video of something you said messenger of the name and I say this in all due respect I use this uh, I'm doing this video in all due respect because I, I do want to show where I believe you're in error of, uh, of your claim because we, we both I, I know that we're both geared for absolute truth and we're wanting absolute truth and we we want to be sure that we are uh, believing and professing and teaching absolute truth now here's a quote from your video you say <clears throat> quote we who are of the understanding of Yahuwah understand that the uh, iota to have a very similar sound to the yod in the Hebrew language. We also understand the upsilon to have the same sound as the wav. Okay, um, I want to mention something right here. There's a thing about Greek speakers and non-Greek speakers. A Greek speaker, like myself, can pick up on the fact that somebody's not a Greek speaker by just merely the pronunciation of letters and words and stuff like that. Uh, one of, one, a great example, everybody knows the word uh, the word for word in the Greek language which is logos. A lot of people pronounce this logos or logos just like it would somewhat read in English. Uh, we, we, trans, we transliterate it letter by letter in English as L-O-G-O-S but the, a non-Greek speaker doesn't realize there's an Omicron and an Omega, uh, which both have the English O sounds, one being the proper, one being the uh, the non-proper, but it's used as an Omicron, so Logos, Logos, Omicron, not Logos, because it's not spelled with the Omega. So I can pick up on this, if I hear someone say something like Logos, I can pick up, well, you're not exactly, uh, and, I, and I say this in the most respectful way possible, you're not formally educated in the language. Uh, I, I didn't understand that step before. I was formally educated in the language, but the problem is here is that you uh, you did pronounce some things a little differently in in your video. Uh, you said it's a an iota, okay? The iota in the Greek is actually pronounced iota. Now you think this is crazy that I'm pointing this out, but it's not because your entire argument is based upon pronunciation. It's an iota, much like the proper e sound in English. Uh, the upsilon, you got right on that one. It's not an upsilon, it's an upsilon, much like a double o sound in English, like in the word hoop or loop or something of that nature. 
Now, uh, so with that understood, there's some pronunciation issues, and I know that your, your, your uh, final premise for your argument is that it's got a pronunciation involved with it. Uh, I want to point out, though, that the letters you see in the first line, the very right side of uh, Revelation 1, 1, in the codex, you, uh, you say it's the, it is the Iota Upsilon Chi Upsilon. You also pronounce the Chi as a, a Chi. Now, uh, in the Greek language, there is no sound uh, with a ch sound in it, nor like a sh, like a sheen in Hebrew. There's no sh in in Greek. That's why when uh, uh, Yeshua's name was translated into Greek, it was transliterated letter by letter, and the sh became a s. So Yesus, Yeshus, Yeshua, it originated in uh, in Yeshua. Drop the uh, alpha, feminine alpha, added a masculine sigma, Yesus, instead of Yeshua, Yeshua, Yesus. That's how we get there. That's for another time. Uh, the etymology of the word Yesus, Jesus, is another topic that we can hit some other time. But the point is that there is no chi either in the Greek language. It is a chi. Uh, we, tr we, we write it out in English as a ch. Uh, to translate it over, but the thing is that it's not pronounced like uh, like chocolate. You know how we have ch at the beginning of chocolate. It's not a ch. Uh, the correct pronunciation is in like the word lock, l o c h. It's a k. It's a hard k. It's where we get the word Christos from. Uh, like Chris, the beginning of uh, the word Chris, c h r i s, Chris. Okay. Uh, it's not it's not tris. It's Chris. Now, uh, the letters in Revelation 1.1, like we said, is the Iota Upsilon, Chi Upsilon. Uh, so, uh, you say that it's pronounced Yu Chu, which is highly, highly stretching the Greek language because, first of all, there's no Y, Yod sound or a Y sound in the Greek. We have to use two vowels like a iota and a eta, 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 and there's a natural eta, eta, but there's no there's no single letter that gives a y sound. Uh, that's why I mean, we we can kind of get to the y sound, but it, it, there's not like I said, there's not a specific letter for it. So it's not u chu, it's iu ku. Now, uh, before we just stop right there problem is that this word is in the genitive form. It's two words. You got iota upsilon, chi upsilon. Both of these words are in the genitive form. Uh, now if you don't understand what the genitive form is, I'm about to show you a chart here that you'll, uh, that you'll be able to understand a little better. Okay, as you can see here, here is a noun declension chart for first and second declension nouns. You'll notice we have nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, and vocative. We're not really going to deal with vocative much because it doesn't even really appear in the New Testament that much. Anyway, nominative. This is when the noun is performing as the subject of the sentence in the nominative case. It would have the Omicron Sigma ending at the end of it. The genitive form is when it is in possession, like the noun is uh, in the possessive form like Josh's in English would be J-O-S-H apostrophe S. In Greek, in a first declension noun, we change the ending to Omicron Upsilon. In the dative, this is a, this is like a locative understanding. This is a like positioning, typically coupled with a prepositional phrase like in Iesus, like uh, or just in Galilee. It, so you change the ending of the noun to Omicron with an Iota subscript. And then accusative is the uh, form in which the noun takes on while it is the direct object of the sentence. So depending on what position the noun is taking, like what role the noun is taking, the ending of it changes. This is, uh, this is something great about Greek because it's consistent and we don't have to worry about this and we can automatically pick out the direct objects and the subjects and the possessives and the uh, the locatives in a sentence just by their noun endings. 
Now I said all this to say this. When we go to Revelation 1.1, we see Iota Upsilon, Chi Upsilon. We know that this is in the genitive form. Remember how the genitive had uh, it ended in an Omicron Upsilon for first declension nouns? Jesus Christos is a first declension noun. Therefore, in the genitive form, Jesus Christos would look like this. As you can see, I've provided Yesu Christu in both lowercase and uppercase letters. I did this because the codex deals with all uppercase letters, but I just wanted to make sure you had both forms to, uh, to verify here. Notice how the ending of both Yesu and Christu on both lowercase and uppercase end in Omicron Upsilon. You will notice that it is spelled Iota, Eta, Sigma, Omicron, Upsilon. Notice that the first letter is an iota, and the last letter is an upsilon. Notice on Christos that the first letter is the chi, and the last letter is the upsilon. If we were to take out everything except the beginning letter and the ending letter in both Iesu Christu, this is what we would have. Doesn't this look a little familiar? Isn't this what we see in Revelation 1.1? where we supposedly have the beginning of Jesus' name in Hebrew, Yeshua. This is Revelation 1.1 from the Codex. As you can see from the top right corner, we have an Iota Upsilon, Chi Upsilon, both in the uppercase. Now, again, this is where Messenger of the Name suggested that this was actually a Hebrew name in the Greek manuscript as uh, Yeshu or Yu Chu, which he somehow brings to support his idea of the name of Messiah being Yahushua. Uh, Yu Chu or Yeshu really doesn't support the idea that that is actually his name. What makes a little bit more sense though is this is, a, this is the abbreviation of Yesu Christu in the genitive form because we know that Revelation 1.1 reads the revelation of Jesus Christ in most Bibles, or of Yeshua the Messiah, of Yesu Christu. Remember how I told you that uh, the genitive form is possessive? That's what this is. I've taken the time to circle this and to show you, like I told you at the beginning of the video, that all names and titles of the Father and Son are actually abbreviated. And a hint for the abbreviation is the line above the word. The abbreviation is the first and last letter of the noun, regardless of what position it is in, whether it be nominative, genitive, dative, or accusative, and it just does the first and last letter and puts a line over top. Much like today when we see the word God used by people in a text, we will see the G slash D. That is to prevent themselves from saying the quote unquote sacred name of God, even though they're using a title to do so. We, th we tend to think that's a modern practice, but that is not a modern practice. That's been around since the time of this codex, which is 2nd to 3rd century AD. As you can look in, uh, at the bottom left, you'll see a third circle, red circle. That is actually the word theos. That's a theta and a sigma. Notice how it has also got the line over top of it. That is the word translated as God or Elohim in Hebrew. They also abbreviate that word because, it, like I said, father and son both have their names and titles abbreviated. So theos, uh, it is in the nominative form here, so it is theta, epsilon, omicron, sigma. Here are the opening lines of John's Gospel. Can you see any abbreviated words yet? You can probably give it away by the, uh, by the line on top of it, as we've seen before. I'll go ahead and circle them for you. So here we have three abbreviated forms of the word theos. Two times it's in the accusative form, which is the direct object, theta, epsilon, omicron, nu, and one time in the nominative form, theta, epsilon, omicron, sigma. So see we have theta, nu, theta, sigma, and theta, nu. All three of these times, the word theos has been abbreviated. Here's the opening of James' epistle. As we can see, we've got a plethora of words here that have been abbreviated. We've got Theos, Kyrios, Iesus, and Christos all again. Starts out you can see Theos in the genitive form where it is Theta, Upsilon, so it would have normally been spelled Theta, Epsilon, Omicron, Upsilon. Notice there it's abbreviated again. Uh, to the next bubble on the right you'll see Kappa, Upsilon. 
which is the word kurios, the word translated as lord or master in the English Bibles. This is a, it starts with a kappa and ends with a upsilon. And then again we see the Iesus Christos again. Just like in Revelation 1.1, 1, 1, it's Iota, Upsilon, Chi, Upsilon, Iesu, Christu in the genitive form. So as you can see, the Codex does contain the name many times, just as many times as the English Bibles contain the word Jesus Christ, or a restored name Bible contains Yeshua the Messiah. Regardless, the name is in there. This was In Revelation 1.1, 1, 1, this was not a Greek way to pronounce the Hebrew pronunciation, the beginning of his Hebrew name, uh, Yuchu, somehow that become Yahushua according to Messenger of the Name. Uh, but like I said, I wanted to do this out of respect and out of a desire to share the truth and to help others know the truth and maybe teach truth, I hope that Messenger of the Name sees this and he watches this and he has no hard feelings about this and I hope that I hope that he uses this to correct his misunderstandings and to begin to teach the truth that the Greek manuscripts, the oldest Greek Bible, uh, still in existence, the Codex Sinaiticus, does contain the name Jesus Christos. I hope this has blessed you. Thank you. Shalom.